Here we go. Hey. Hey there. How's it going? What's the population of your light state? As of my last update in October 2023, the population of the United States. Okay. Okay. Could you count from one to ten? Sure thing. Here's one to ten. One, two, three, four. Okay. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. If you need anything else, just let me know. Hi, everyone. Let's start by taking a look at OpenAI's real-time API. This powerful tool allows for real-time interaction with a GPT-4 model through WebSockets, making it ideal for applications that require low latency responses, such as voice assistants uh, and conversational agents. It supports both text and audio interactions, offering a smooth multimodal experience. Today, we'll walk through how we can integrate this API into an Android app. So let's dive into the setup and implementation together. First, the application starts by requesting microphone permissions. Once granted, we set up the WebSocket connection, which allows us to interact with OpenAI's real-time API. The microphone is necessary for recording audio input and sending it to the server for processing. Now, the first critical API we use is session.update. This event is used to configure the session. In this case, we configure it to handle both text and audio. We set the input lock audio match format to PCM16 and the output lock audio match format to PCM16 as well. We also use server-side VAD, voice activity detection, for smoother conversations, meaning the model will automatically detect when the user starts and stops talking. Once the session is configured, we initiate the audio recording using a sample rate of 60,000 Hz mono channel configuration and the PCM 16 bit format to ensure high quality voice capture. The recording is handled by the Android Audio Record class, which continuously reads the audio data into a buffer. For each chunk of audio data read, we first convert it into base64 format, which prepares the raw audio data for transmission. Then we send the base64 encoded audio data to the server using the input dash audio harm buffer to the append event. Uh, this step is crucial because it allows the server to process the audio in real time as it arrives, giving the user immediate feedback. The recording continues in the background, and this process ensures that the audio is consistently captured, encoded, and sent, all while the session remains active, making the interaction smooth and responsive. Response audio.delta is used to transmit audio responses from the server in chunks. Initially, I used this method to play the audio directly, but I soon encountered an issue there was no way to interrupt the assistant responses. After investigating the problem, I found that the audio playback was blocking the WebSocket. This meant that all the response audio delta chunks had to be received and processed before any new input like interruption could be handled. To solve this, I implemented an audio playback queue. Instead of playing the audio immediately, I added it to a queue that processes audio asynchronously. This decouples the audio playback from the WebSocket, ensuring the WebSocket can continue receiving and sending the new data while the audio plays smoothly in the background. When the server detects that the user has started speaking, it triggers the input cyclical audio buffer start speech uh, started event. As soon as this event is received, we immediately stop any ongoing uh, audio playback and clear the audio queue to ensure that the new speech takes priority. We also start an animated wave effect, which visually represents the speaking activity. Then, when the input uh, audio buffer the speech uh, uh, stopped event is triggered, we stop the animation and reset the wave display to indicate that speaking has finished. In the future iterations, 
we could extend this app to use even more of the real-time APIs features, for example, integrating more tools like weather reports or custom session configurations tailored to specific user needs. This would create a more immersive, interactive experience. Finally, let's take a quick look at some additional real-time API events that we haven't yet used but could be valuable in future applications. First, we have the input torch audio search buffer dot clear event. This event is used to clear any audio data that might still be buffered, ensuring the next audio segment starts fresh. Next is the conversation dot item dot create event, which allows us to insert new items into uh, the conversation, such as the user inputs or assistant responses. Following that is the conversation dot item truncate, uh, which truncates a previous message's audio if necessary. We can also use conversation.item.delete to remove any conversation item from the history, which is uh, helpful for maintaining clean interaction. Finally, we have response.create, uh, which is responsible for triggering a model to generate a response based on the session configuration and the response.cancel, which cancels an in-progress response uh, if the, the user decides to stop it. And that concludes our exploration of how to use the OpenAI real-time API in a real-time voice assistant application. If you found this helpful, make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more tutorials on building interactive AI experiences.